Allô tout le monde, mon nom est Chantal Maccabé, vice-présidente de communication à clé du Canadien de Montréal. Nous sommes très heureux d'être avec vous aujourd'hui, chers partisans. Vous êtes passionnés, vous êtes merveilleux. On vous voit de retour au Centre Bell depuis quelques matchs et vous êtes pas mal extraordinaire. C'est incroyable l'appui que vous nous donnez. Alors aujourd'hui, je suis en compagnie de Jeff Corton et de Cat Hughes pour répondre à vos questions. Il y en a beaucoup et on y va dès maintenant et on y va tout de suite. So we'll start uh, with Kat. I have a first question in English for you, and it is here. So, so let me just have it here. Oh, I had it. It's like it goes on and on. It's incredible. Thank That's you for being here. <laughs> oh my God, I, I just can't believe this. Kat goes on. Okay, so <laughs> Sanya Surfer is asking Kat. Hi, Kat. Really nice. Whoops. Okay, so I need to. I'm not used to this, so I'm sorry. It's just. <laughs> Okay, hi Kat. Really nice work uh, at the tra uh, trade deadline. How different or difficult will future, sorry, it, uh, will future deadlines be when you are a buyer? That's, they, they will be It's, different. That'll definitely be different. It, it would be, in some sense, a more in, enjoyable process because you're bringing players in and probably trading away picks it's difficult to send away players that are part of the family and um, you, you know that there's emotional connections, there's family issues, there's a lot of things that go with it. Um, but on the other end, when, when, you're, when you're a buyer, uh, you know, you're on the opposite end and I, I think buyers typically, given the need to try to win, end up paying a little bit more. So I look forward to being on that end. Uh, hopefully it's sooner than later. Il y a plusieurs personnes. A lot of people are asking when Baron will be able to play. When he'll be able to play? Yeah. Well, uh, we're actually flying him today to Montreal, uh, and he'll be on the ice uh, tomorrow with us. So we'll uh, we'll see. We'll uh, we'll have to stay tuned to find out exactly <laughs> when he'll play. But uh, he's coming to Montreal. Uh, question for uh, Mr. Gordon for Jeff. Uh -huh. uh, have you been able to enjoy the city since you've been here? Um, I have, actually. Um, the beginning was tough for the little COVID, uh, yeah. you know, uh, being uh, just uh, really hockey back to the, uh, to the apartment and, and that's it. <laughs> But uh, lately, uh, being able to go out with the restaurants and, uh, and enjoy the city uh, has, been, has been really nice. A uh, question for uh, Kent Hughes. Would it be possible? Oh, I had just lost it. Uh, Wait, I have it. Uh, okay, I have uh, this question. What's the plan for Matthias Norlinder next season? Well, well, that plan will start to take shape, I guess, in the summertime when we have our development camp and, and as we move into the season. But we'd certainly like him here in North America. And, and whether that's in Laval or, or Montreal, that's a decision that's going to be made during training camp. And again, I think those decisions are made initially But it's an evolving process, as we learned this year. I mean, with injuries and sickness, there, there's been a tremendous amount of turnover. So hopefully he comes and has a great year, and, and we're seeing him in Montreal at some point. Uh, Jeff, will Martin Saint-Louis interim tag get removed during the offseason? Will he get removed? Yeah. The, the, the tag. Removed or renewed? Uh, interim, <laughs> interim tag. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, I think that would be nice. That's the we'll, We agreed when we brought... Uh, Marty in that uh, we wouldn't talk about it until the season was over and uh, he's put a he's put a pretty good foot forward and to uh, showing us what he can do and and how our team will respond to him so well Kent and I will sit down with him uh, as soon as the season's over and, and figure out what's best for both of us but it's uh, certainly encouraging his his beginnings I have a question here will it, will it be possible for Cole Caulfield to change number because uh, uh a lot of people are asking this. Was it? Is that a thing? Does he want to do that? I know. I've never heard Cole say oh. that, that he wanted uh, to change. I, uh, uh, oh, because the eight is uh, is available. He I, I, didn't have the, the, the number eight when uh, yeah. he was playing NCAA. Was was it number eight that he had or? No, I think he was. I think it was 22. I, th I thought yeah. he was 22, but okay. we'll have to check. That's a good question for the summer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh. So to stop the, the, the iPad, I just, okay, I, I, I got it now. Like this, okay. Um, another question here, will the plan to be to draft mostly forwards or it's, yeah, so. Mostly like, forwards? Yeah. 
Uh, no, I, we haven't sat down with the scouts to discuss what the plan will be, but for the most part, I would imagine it's to draft the best possible player, and, and the roster construction component of it comes after the fact, not at the draft. Will you, uh, do you have any intention to try a Joshua Hua next uh, season, next training camp, whatever? Well, I think that uh, he's having a great year. You know, we'll, uh, we're certainly like what he's doing, and uh, that would be nice. The sooner he can do it, the better. We'll, we'll take that. Um, but again, he's a player we're, we're, we're really happy with how he's playing and how he's uh, developing. And, uh, you know, I think we'll sit down with him soon and figure out, you know, what's the, what's the next on his plan. Uh, a question here, have you talked to Jordan Harris' uh, agent yet? Or how does it work exactly? Because people don't really know uh, that you're, like, you're not allowed to talk to him, I think. Yeah, the NCAA doesn't permit a, a student athlete to have an agent technically, so he would be what they call an NCAA family advisor. Um, and they can't negotiate okay. professional contracts. So yeah. uh, we've talked about what the opportunity would be in Montreal for him if he chooses to, you know, he, he's an impending free agent. If he doesn't sign with us, our hope is that he does. We are, you know, kind of laid out what we're trying to do with the organization, what our plan is and how we see him fitting in. And I'm hopeful that, uh, he, you know, I've known Jordan for a long time. I've coached Jordan. I yeah. know his, uh, his family and obviously he's played with and against my oldest son since they were seven or eight years of age. So hopeful that uh, there's a little bit of familiarity that works in our favor. We know a few of those kids on that team there, Chantella. Hopefully we'll be able to handle it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you will. <laughs> uh, I have uh, it's, um, discussion about a potential captain next season. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to have is a discussion about that. And, uh, and uh, Kent and I and the coach uh, will figure out in the offseason if uh, we're ready for that, if we have somebody that's ready for that. And uh, you know, that w we'll, uh, we'll go from there. Another question, and I, I receive that a lot, is Carey Price coming back this season? I don't think there's ever been a press conference in Montreal that didn't include Carey Price. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, the time. <laughs> uh, we're hopeful. Yes. Yeah, and for your information, Carey Price, uh, bon, he's recommenced to train with his coéquipiers this week. He's going well, 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 he's Uh, hi, Kat, and hi, uh, Jeff. Uh, do you think we will see uh, Schooneman next season? He's been a, a, an interesting surprise, this, uh, this young man. Yeah, he's definitely been impressive since uh, yeah. the, his latest uh, recall. Um, so, yeah, I mean, based on what he's doing, if he can keep up this level of play, uh, I would say that we'd certainly like to keep him and move forward with him. He's, uh, he, he moves the puck well. He, he plays bigger than he is and uh, can really shoot a puck. So... Uh, actually, pretty exciting to see how he's played lately. I have an interesting question here. Any chance to bring back Andre Markov on a one-year deal to provide him uh, the chance to uh, to to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to run our power play or to uh, no, retire? Uh, well, it would be pretty good on the power play. That's for Probably sure. Probably can still do that. But to, uh, I think it's uh, it's what a thousand games. I think isn't it for Andre Markov? Um, he's played what nine ninety nine. Yeah. So just like a uh, one-game deal. Probably. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Can we do this? Probably not. I think Jeff's going to say that's a summer thing. No, <laughs> it's not a summer thing, but I could probably say no. Okay. So. <laughs> no, it's too complicated, it isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that uh, we'll go with the guys we have for now. Yeah. And we can certainly understand that. Um, okay, let me see. Where's, uh, okay, because I have to... Uh, Filtrer les informations. He was a great player, though. I will say he that. Was, yeah. He was. He was. An incredible defenseman. Yeah. That's Underrated. For sure. um, how much information do you have on prospect before you uh, trade for them? It depends on the prospect. Um, can't say that we have a, a equal book on every prospect that exists in the National Hockey League, but if it's uh, a prospect that we either are targeting or is brought up to us, you know, we'll, 
you know, all hands are on deck. We're talking to our amateur scouts that may have seen that player in his amateur days, his pro pro days. We had, you know, our development coach and Vinny and uh, even Marty ourselves. We're all watching video on them, trying to get get as much of a handle on what their game is. And w- with the software systems today, it's it's amazing the way we can evaluate a player. Uh, uh, for both of you, what's your impression of Michael Pizzetta? Um, it's strong. I, I, listen, every time he's on the ice, you notice him. Um, <laughs> so that, uh, that to me is a pretty good attribute. I think uh, his style of play is, uh, is definitely uh, attractive to the fans and to uh, his bosses. Uh, so he's, uh, he's good. He's, he's really got better. His improvement with his skills and, yeah. and everything lately... Uh, Kent and I were talking about him the other day, so uh, certainly impressed with uh, with uh, where he's at and, and how far he's come. Nikolai and his fashion sense. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nikolai is asking, how do you split uh, stacks, uh, um, uh, task? Among, uh, Jeff, <laughs> Jeff puts his feet up on the table, <laughs> yeah. he looks up at the ceiling, <laughs> yeah. and he looks back at me. Yeah. I, get, I, I try to take all the good stuff, <laughs> and I leave him all the hard stuff. <laughs> okay, you're uh, senior, so you're yeah. allowed to do this. <laughs> no, I, I think it flows pretty good. Uh, we have different relationships with different people, and, and uh, I think we work pretty well off each other. We're learning yeah. that, and uh, uh, we have fun with it. Uh, if you were behind closed doors, uh, I think you, you'd see we have some fun. Um, but uh, we also can get pretty serious too. Pour quelle est la philosophie, Simon Servant qui demande quelle est la philosophie de Jeff et Kent quant à je parle quant à l'échange de choix pour s'avancer dans les rondes de repêchage. So what's the opinion of Jeff and Kent regarding the possibility of trading picks to draft earlier in each round? Je crois que c'est c'est vraiment basé sur nos listes. C'est un joueur qu'on cote, euh, qu'on a, disons qu'on arrive au euh, le 4, 40e choix. Ouais. Puis on a quelqu'un sur nos listes qui, on a 15 ou 17, mais pour une raison ou d'autre, est encore disponible. Puis on a deux choix ou trois choix en troisième round. Est-ce qu'on va servir de nos choix pour avancer en deuxième? Ça, c'est des décisions que, qui sont prises au repêchage. Uh, I'd like to add to that, but it'd be tough. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be tough. But, uh, I just said I, that I, we I would. It sounded very intelligent. Yeah. I said it, it, it depends on where a player is in our list. If there's somebody that we yeah. covet and we can use picks to get up and uh, get them. Yeah, I, I think that we've afforded ourselves uh, the ability to, to do different things, whether we need to go up, whether we need to go down with all these picks and some of these young players. So it, it's exciting to think about where we could where we could use these picks and yeah. maybe it's a you know I mentioned earlier it could be somebody that's ready to play uh, another team you know maybe we maybe they're looking for a first round pick and we and we flip it that way so there's there's a lot of uh, different things scenarios we can look at there's a question here where uh, would you say Nick Suzuki is in his uh, development well I, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of Nick Suzuki's game yeah. and Nick Suzuki yeah. as an individual and and future leader um, you know we've heard that he you know he admires uh, Patrice Bergeron yeah. and wants to play in, in that vein and I represented Patrice for what almost 22 years now uh, I see a lot of parallels in, in terms of character they're, they're quiet leaders uh, they're very serious about their profession uh, you know Nick has certain attributes that he that are probably You know, he has an advantage over Patrice. I, I think he'll continue to learn how to play uh, on the defensive side of it to, to uh, get to Patrice, but he's a great role model to aspire to. And I, I see Nick Suzuki as the number one center in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Uh, what will you be looking in the free agency this summer? We can't tell everybody everything. <laughs> yeah, tell. I know, but they're <laughs> curious. <laughs> I know. Uh, well... I would say that, uh, you know, there, there actually is a good free agent market. Um, there's a lot of good players out there. Um, you know, we'll look at it, uh, see, see where we're at, see where our holes are, and see if there's a fit. You know, I think that whatever we do, it, it probably won't be a, a short-term fix. We'll, yeah. we'll be looking for, 
for the future. Maybe we we uh, short term deals to try to you know wait till some of these young players are available. But we'd like to give our young players as many opportunities to play too uh, uh, as we can. There's a question for Jeff here. Do you see similarities between Josh Anderson and Chris Kreider? Uh, yeah, yeah, actually I do. Um, both power wingers, hard to find, yeah. uh, goal scorers. Uh, yeah, there's definitely, a, uh, Anderson is a, is, a, is a tough, tough kid and, and he gets a lot of room and uh, I think he can actually still get better. Uh, so I'm excited about him. He's a, he's a kind of player that's really hard to find. That a lot of players, uh, they, they, there's not a lot of players like him in the league. So um, I think he can only get better as uh, as our group gets better. Yeah. Uh, who is your biggest surprise this year? For me? Yeah, and Kat, um, both of you. Wow. Um, well, I'll say I, I think that uh, I expected Cole to be good, and now he's he's playing really well. So that's exciting. Um, I think Suzuki's probably a. a You know, when I first got here, I had heard that he was uh, a good player and, uh, you know, maybe a, a quality second-line player. But the more we're watching him, the more we're seeing him, uh, he's getting better every game. And that's, uh, that's huge for us if he, can, if he can go to that next level. Uh, so probably him. I have a question here. I'm not, I'm not sure if you're allowed to talk about this, but there, uh, that comes uh, pretty often here. Could Ben Sherratt be back next season? Can't talk about it. Definitely can't talk about it. Of course, yeah, that's what I thought, but I'm still asking because a lot of people I, are asking you know, this. So. Kent, Kent, uh, Kent will appreciate this too, but yeah. the, when we traded Ben Sherratt, my wife was very disappointed. Yeah. She's like, you just I can't understand Ben's, why. You just traded the most. <laughs> you understand why? Oh, yeah. Oh, so totally. I don't have to explain. So, yes. Yeah. 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 The women here are saying. In the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's hope, let's hope when we trade you, you get the same reaction. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried when we were coming out here, Vinny was going to sit next to me. <laughs> okay, um, pouvez-vous me dire bonjour, s'il vous plaît? Bonjour, Maxime. Enchanté, merci d'être ici avec nous. Um, oh, I have this. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, question for both. Uh, would. <laughs> Where would you place uh, Caden Gooley? Uh, would he play the a AHL? Have you spoken to him uh, recently? Yeah, so I went and saw him play in Edmonton. Yeah, that's uh, true. When we were there. Yeah. And met with him after and chatted with him. Listen, he, he's a young prospect. We're, we don't need to place anybody anywhere at this point in time. We're still finishing this season. Uh, we expect him to be a Montreal Canadian for a long time. And, and we're going to retain that flexibility just to judge and, and gauge as, as we go here. But, you know, there have been a lot of questions about development. We're not going to force players into situations that they're ready for, not ready for. But at the same time, we're not, we're not going to hold players back if they show they're ready for it. So. Qu'est-ce que tu aimes de Caden Goulet en français? J'aime uh, beaucoup son patin. Il joue une game robust. Um, je, vis je visionne qu'il pourrait jouer dans le style de Ben Chirot. Bon coup de patin, il est très physique, il va faire une première passe. Euh, puis il a scoré, il a fait, je pense qu'il a fait un but, une passe dans le match qu'on a assisté. Ouais. Alors, c'est un très bon joueur. OK. Oh, uh, which prospect do you expect to see in the World Juniors this summer? Ah, uh, well, that's a bit of an open-ended one because yeah. uh, there, we don't know exactly what players are going to end up going there yeah. in August because of the timing. So it's a good question. I would think, you know, uh, Joshua Wah was, was close to making the team. Maybe not if everyone's back. I don't know how these teams are going to go about building their teams, whether the same players are back. We're still trying to learn that. So a uh, good question. Like Caden Gooley was the captain of the team. Is he going to play? So uh, we still have a lot to learn before, uh, before we know. How many rookies do you think could crack the lineup next year? Uh, that's a good question. Are you open, like, because you, you want a younger team? And I don't know, is that a possibility? Oh, I think we uh, crack the lineup, meaning play the whole year versus at come, some point in time get games? Camp. Yeah, come out of training camp, I guess, yeah. It's hard to say. Like, he's, you mentioned Gooley. Gooley has a chance to, to make our team, of course. Um, like Ken said, we won't hold him back if he's ready. Um, 
you know, beyond that, there's always a few surprises. You know, we, we talked about a few young players. That's what we need, right? We, it's always good to have the, the young kids make your team, give you the, some more enthusiasm, more excitement. Uh, the fans get behind it. The players like it. So yeah. we, we want that. So uh, hopefully uh, we have a huge summer with all of our players and our development camp and everything we have to do and, and put them in good spots to make it. Okay. Can we expect a long-term deals for Romanov and Caulfield this summer? Or is it too early? a good question, isn't it? <laughs> while, he, while he thinks about it, I'll tell yeah. you. Uh, I, I, I would say... <laughs> Go ahead, John. <laughs> maybe, maybe if the deal's right, for yeah. sure. Like yeah. Romy's playing really good right now, and uh, certainly more opportunity for him with, with Ben and, and, uh, and Brett Kulak on too now. So, um, so we'll see it. He's, he's a player we like, that we like to keep moving forward with. He, he has a certain element that uh, is, again, hard to find. Um, so, and who was the other one besides Romy? Uh, Caulfield. Caulfield. Oh, Caulfield. So he's got another year. So yep. yeah. We'll, yeah. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, you know, two players that uh, we hope are with us for a while. How will you define a successful season for the team in a transition phase? I think it's, we see a progression in terms of one, style of play, uh, two, the youthfulness of our, of our players. Um, you know, we got players that are going to play in our team next year. Yeah. There's no question about it. Whether they're still part of a team by the time we're ready to compete for a Stanley Cup, you know, probably not. Timelines are timelines. So, uh, but we also want to make sure that we see the the culture, the commitment to to team to. Uh, to winning and to putting their best foot forward every night that we've seen. So that, that'll be very important. And we want to see that continuation and, and see our, our younger players start to challenge for jobs. Who are the prospects that are the most interesting heading to the draft? Oh, for that aren't drafted yet? Um, <laughs> well, obviously, I mean, there's, there's, if you just look at the rankings by publications, not us, right? There's a lot of good players out there. People talk about Shane Wright. People talk about how good he is and how good he's been for a while. Uh, Slavkovsky, you know, he wins the medal for Slovakia the first time. He's the player of the tournament. Um, you know, there's several players there that are exciting. Um, you know, Kent and I, we just got through the uh, the deadline and now we're getting excited to go see some of these guys a little more and, and, and jump in there and, and see what the guys are seeing. So, uh, you know, We could probably answer that question the day after the draft. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last question, it's in <laughs> French uh, for you, Kat. Uh, yep. Est-ce que Vincent Le Cavalier était dans le War Room hier? Et si oui, qu'est-ce qu'il a apporté uh, à votre organisation? Uh, oui, il était dans le War Room. Uh, qu'est-ce qu'il apporte? Il y, a une, il y a une certaine expérience comme joueur d'hockey, uh, d'avoir gagné une Coupe Stanley, d'avoir été au World Cup, aux Olympiques. Uh, puis il parle comme un joueur. Alors, quand on discutait des, euh, des transactions euh, ou même on discutait dès qu'on a, euh, on a échangé pour Morgan Barron, est-ce qu'on l'emmène puis on le met directement dans ouais. l'alignement ou est-ce qu'on l'envoie dans la Ligue américaine, on enlève la pression? Puis, c'était euh, était très bon à partager ses conseils. Comme joueur, j'aurais senti telle chose. Merci beaucoup, messieurs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alors, euh, merci à tout le monde. Merci d'avoir été là. Et euh, merci pour euh, votre support inconditionnel. Vous êtes absolument merveilleux. Merci tout le monde. Vos questions étaient très intéressantes. Bye-bye. Bonne journée.